Hi, this is Alex Ellis, Docker Captain here. I posted a picture of my Raspberry Pi Swarm. I've actually posted several pictures of it on Twitter over the last few weeks. And they seem to have a real popularity, far more than I ever expected. And so what I wanted to do was to show Swarm mode working and um, run through a few test scenarios. I'm not going to go into deep detail on the complete setup but I'm going to show you the commands that I'm typing in and hopefully this will inspire you to go off and try it for yourself. Um, if you look at the Swarm tutorial on the Docker website, it has most of the details that you're going to need to be able to run through the test scenarios, including three networked hosts um, and everything else that you um, could need to type in. I am going to use seven hosts here which gives us 28 cores and Docker refers to those as CPU. So effectively to Docker, we've got 28 CPUs and um, I'm gonna start off on the first one. You can see Docker version here is giving us 112, which is great. And if you want to know how to set up Docker on the Raspberry Pi, head over to my blog and check this article out there is after um, after flashing Raspbian a couple of tweaks you can make that are optional but really there is a curl bash statement much like you'd expect on any distribution now and if you want to dig a bit deeper the tutorial will then go on to provide you a few base images that you can make use of and an example of using physical hardware which on the Raspberry Pi is called GPIO, General Input or Output, and with this you have almost limitless possibilities. Um, starting small, you can flash an LED, you could then make that into a web server, and it's a small example here, um, and you can just keep taking that further. Really exciting space. So I put together a bunch of Docker Swarm mode test scenarios, um, and these are what I'm going to run through now. I'm currently on my first host and as we know you have to start off by checking whether you're actually in a swarm already and the best way of doing that is typing in docker info and look for the word swarm. You could also use grep here and uh, we're inactive so that means we're not part of a swarm and what better pi to pick than swarm node number one to type in docker swarm in it. This will take a couple of seconds. It's working out what network adapters you've got and exactly what ports need to be configured. And this is our join token. This is what we need to enter in on all of our other devices, the other six pies if we want them to join. We could also use a manager's joining token, but once we've joined as a worker, they can also be promoted. Now I've got a script here, which will go through with SSH and execute a command on each of the pies. And that command is going to be docker swarm leave just to make sure, followed by the join token. And it doesn't matter that I'm executing this on the first one because the command will fail. Let's try that again. So we're on node two, we're joined, three, four, etc. These are all Raspberry Pi twos. And now that we've joined them all, we should be able to connect back to the first Pi, that manager, and check out our list of nodes. We now have seven nodes available. 
only one of them is a manager, we could keep things simple or if we wanted to make another one a manager, let's say number three, we can type in docker swarm promote and then pick one of these uh, nodes in fact it's a docker node promote and now that has become a manager and we can see the status in the node ls command okay so we've got reachability between all of the nodes they're ready to go and we can look at the first scenario which is a ping service let's run through scenario one this is effectively a very simple long-running task which will ping Google and as you know if you run a ping in a terminal it will just keep going we've got seven nodes so we'll pick seven replicas and we'll start this off now what SwarmKit is doing at the moment is going around and trying to establish seven replicas and if we do docker service ls we already have seven if some of our nodes didn't have the image yet then it might have taken slightly longer and then even when they do have the image if there's a startup time associated with that you might want to look at docker service ps to see whether the desired state and the current state are actually matching so often times when this is pulling still from the hub you see a current state of um, preparing so let's try this out um, we appear to have one of the tasks on our manager we'll go in and look at the logs and it's probably going to have quite a lot of output, so we'll run a tail on it. That looks great. So what's the cleanup? Cleanup is simply Docker service RM. And if this was a service you would want to start up again later on, you could scale that to zero, which will effectively remove all the tasks, but keep the configuration ready. Great, so the next service is a web service. This tests the built-in load balancing and mesh routing capabilities of Swarm mode. Let's run this in with slightly more replicas, one per host, and this time round, if we're quick enough, we might see some of them starting They're all up and running and they're ready to receive a curl. So let's have a look at localhost and see what we get back. As you can see, this publish command is much like Docker run. It accepts two ports, the port we want to display and the port in the container. So to test, the round robin connectivity, we should run this at least seven times. But I won't ask you to take my word for it that we're using a different container each time. You can't see that from the output. So what I did is I put together another container which will also print a GUID and the container name. And we'll just run through that right now. So the services we've got running are a single service called hello1 with seven replicas. We don't need that now, so I'm going to perform the cleanup. And let's create the GUI generator and try that out. So we've got seven tasks running. We'll type in a curl. And take a look at the container. So as we run this, the round robin 
load balancing should pick up a different task. Seven times. And then we'll start to go back around to the beginning again. And you can see it appears to be using quite a fair order. This appears to correspond to task one, two, three, etc. And then we see that number again right down here. So feel free to use this image. It is in the Docker Hub. I might add it to the test scenarios later on. Um, hope you found that interesting. So let's move on to scenario three, where we start to do something really exciting, which is multi-host networking. We will have a Redis container, and that will be running on in any one of the seven pies. And then we'll have seven instances of a web service and each time we call it, it will incre increment a number by one. And effectively, because we've only got a single Redis instance, that means every node needs to find its way back to that Redis instance. Um, so let's move on to that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is create an overlay network and we're going to specify a subnet just to make sure we have a really deterministic configuration here. We don't want to clash with anything. When I type in docker network ls, what you'll see is that new network has a scope across the swarm, so it will be propagated amongst all of the nodes. We won't need to run that command in on each node. Now I'm going to run a Redis instance. Again, this is an image on the public hub, which you feel free to pull. We're just gonna have one of these. And then the next step is to go and create the Node.js web service arm Redis counter. And this will accept calls on 3000 and then increment a database on Redis. Before we get there, let's just check out the health of that Redis service. So it's up and running, it's nice and happy. Here's the service create for the counter and we want seven replicas. There we go. So Docker service LS is now showing us the counter and this is what I was talking about earlier is sometimes catch it before it's actually put all the replicas in. So it's always a good idea to look before you start hitting it. And what do we have here? We've got a failure. Let's have another look. So do we have a container per host? Let's see. We've got four, three, seven, five, six, two, and three. So three's been used twice, but this line is quite interesting. So what appears to have happened, and this is something that um, I'm going to open an issue on, is that SwarmKit has tried to allocate the address. For some reason, it's not been able to, but more or less instantaneously, it's worked out another way of doing that and we do actually have um, the node that it was attempting to create it on um, synced up with a task. So we've got our seven tasks. There's some output here, but we don't need to worry about it at the moment. So let's, let's try this out. Let's run a curl. And we want to run this at least as many times as we've got tasks. And on the right hand side of the screen, what you can see is the distribution of those tasks. This is actually running on the Raspberry Pi compiled on ARM. It's something that Mano Marks put together and was demonstrated at DockerCon. It's a really cool visualizer. And it's just showing us the live situation. So that Redis container is actually running on Pi 2. And we've got two instances of the counter on Swarm 1. 
and then the rest are spread out. So let's have a look at a tool like Apache Bench. This can be used to do a, a very basic rudimentary load tester. Okay, so we're looking at 100 requests there. They took one second and we were able to process 81 requests per second, which seems okay. If we up the numbers here, we go to let's say seven level of concurrency. That completed way quicker and we've seen a significant increase in performance. Now sometimes when you play with these numbers, it's worth making the test run a bit longer. So I'm putting in a hundred, well, a thousand requests here we have one client requesting. I'll then go in and change that to run with the seven that we just saw. So we're going from 12 seconds to three seconds from 80 requests per second to 325. So that work scaled up really well. We didn't get 100% benefit per node, but we did get a significant drop in time. And who knows, maybe with more tuning of the kernel with a different backing file system, we're currently using overlay. I think AUFS might be a bit quicker on the Raspberry Pi potentially even using a network file system backed by an SSD. There's so many ways that we could take this. Um, and if you want to get involved with these test scenarios, if you'd like to contribute some code to the visualizer, then please get in touch and head over to the blog. This is where you'll find most of the stuff that I'm working on or find me on Twitter and I'd love to get in touch with you and hear what you want to do with your Raspberry Pi Swarm.